Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the next video about the fundamentals for digital artists. In this video, we are going to transition from the practic practical approach to a theoretical part. This video is about different types of images you may come across in your career as digital artist. We are not going to go through every image type because there's a lot to cover and I am not an expert in everything. But to give you as a beginner an idea of how your actual work looks like, here are various types of artworks for you to check out. Concept art. This is about what concept art looks like uh, a lot of times in production for browser games and browser game companies here in Germany. Oftentimes it might even be just outline sketches without colors. The point is that this image delivers enough info for a 3D asset for the team to move on with the production. It does not necessarily look like a beautiful illustration, but I was instructed to add no extra details around the image except for the ship for scale. This, is, this image is for a browser game called Kultan which I worked on for uh, uh, which I worked on a few years ago. I created many assets for this game and since it was in ISO perspective and a somewhat stylized game, this is how concept art looked like it uh, looked like for um, you know, oftentimes. Also it had to look exactly like in the game not better or worse with but with all textures in and colors in place so that there was no misunderstanding between 2d and 3d artists this may not be always the case so let's look at another example model sheet a model sheet is basically a presentation and concept art that presents a 3d model and contains information for a 3D artist to create it in 3D. It is presented like a product in 3 4th top-down view plus orthogonal views, notes, the name of the artist, but not in a fancy manner, but for making sure everybody knows who made it, name of the product, date, and sometimes thumbnails, detailed drawings, textures, and material studies like in this. And um, I will show you another example. And the top right shows some photo references provided by the client along with the original 3D asset which needed a rework. I had to pixelate it so because of um, yeah, copyright stuff. And the bottom left shows a number of thumbnail sketches. The client picked from them and I merged the ideas in the bottom right. The turret needed some functionalities like replacing the head needed to be easy and rotating along X and Y axis had to be possible. Therefore I made this little explosion graphic, graphic which got approved and I made a quick 3D version in SketchUp which you can see in orthogonal projection on top and I rendered it to a final version in product view. Product view is a term that comes from Feng Zhu, which means showing the product in 3 fourth view and from top so that you can see as much as possible of the object so that it's easy to reconstruct in 3D. Production painting. Production painting is a term used by Feng Zhu a lot in his videos on YouTube. And production paintings are paintings of shots or sets or levels and so on, but not polished or something we would call an illustration. They do contain the necessary information to work with, but due to the time restriction, the concept artist usually does not polish the artwork to such a level that the overall quality is considered for marketing at that point. It can be approved by the art director for production and maybe later be polished to 
be used as marketing material or loading screen or whatever. Next is turnaround. This is not an actual turnaround of a concept art, but I just make made an example because I have no, nothing to show at this point, I, which I can use. So a turnaround shows a 3D model, usually characters from each side in orthogonal uh, projection and preferably in a neutral pose, usually the T pose, which is a pose with arms away from the body, ready for animation, so that the 3D artist can use this as a construction plan for modeling. Thumbnails. Thumbnails are one of my favorites. I do these a lot and they are tiny images, like thumbnails, which we draw before we make the actual image from them. We create different ideas and focus on the bold shapes, compositions and values while keeping them, uh, while keeping the image real small. Um, oftentimes they are in black and white. I just like to add some color as early as possible in order to solve this problem. So yeah, I don't have to worry about it later. We don't focus on the details at this point, but generate a lot of ideas and later we can choose what we want to show to the client and then he can choose from them or merge ideas or restart all over without the artist having too much time spent. Illustration. Illustrations are images you hang up on the wall or you use them in books or on book covers or as a marketing image, poster and such. They are meant to be used just to look good and for you to look at it and uh, become entertained and to entertain the viewer. They can also be used to explain stuff or support a PowerPoint presentation or make people remember things and stuff like that. But more on that later. Face studies and expression sheets. The face studies are mostly used for studying expressions, like a hand study would study different poses and types of hands, a face study would explore different facial moods and expressions. An expression sheet would be a presentation of different moods from a character. With the background info and the character provided he may have different moods and facial expressions collected in an expression sheet. Color studies. This is showing a few images with the same motif but different color variations to set the mood. In this case, we have a windscreen in an early stage and it was of red color until someone said the red makes it look like a loose screen. And um, which may be true if you don't know the background of what um, of what ship this actually is that is exploding. Sprite sheets. This is kind of how a sprite sheet looks like. I took a screenshot from a sprite sheet generator generator, so there's some background that does not belong into it, and the sprite might have some more frames but it is basically a collection of frames for the animation used in a game. Wireframes. Wireframes are something from the 3D world. When you look at a 3D object in wireframe mode, you can see all the edges and vertices um, it is made of, like what we had in the very first video. Wireframe is also something we use as a grid layout for interfaces and websites. This term is relatively new in this field since mobile websites started booming. So we use these layouts as UI designers and um, this in order to come up with a functional solution without making the image look good before we polish the UI and add art. We test things out and make them work before we invest time to make it look good. 
mockup. The UI mockup can look like this just before it gets exported. So this mockup is an image of how a UI screen might look like. Now after testing functionality and adding some art, we can export it. Dialog image or strategic illustration. These are used by companies to explain workflows, processes or presentations. You can also see it in graphic recordings like everybody knows from Draw My Life where people illustrate what they are talking about. This is not related to games or entertainment, though it is something you can earn a lot of money with. So that's probably interesting. Last but not least, textures. Um, as a concept artist, it may become part of your job too, to create textures for 3D models. There are many different kinds of them, and I just want you to know they exist and show you briefly an example of my very first 3D asset which I created for my master degree project. So it was not my first 3D um, in general, but uh, for this particular project back in 2011 uh, in order to establish the production pipeline. It was basically a 3D it was basically a 3D Max, ZBrush and PS workflow, Photoshop, plus some other tools like Crazy Bump and stuff like that. However, the top right one is called a diffuse map, which contains all the basic color information of your model. And the bottom one is what I call a normal map, which generates details, bumps and dense for example on your model. This is used as a real-time effect so that your computer gets this as a fake geometry effect. The different colors move the geometry into different directions so you have a 3D effect. A grayscale version of such a map would only move the geometry up and down and it and I would call that a bump map. However let it be known that depending on where you come from, programmers for example, tend to use these terms in the opposite way. So be aware of that in the future to always get the wording right. There are many other types of textures, but they should give you a brief introduction and there will probably be more videos introducing more terms and more types of artworks in the future. That being said, the next video will go deep into the fundamentals of how we as people perceive reality, how we try to digitize this and basically how to use this for the future as digital artists. Until then, like, share and subscribe and ask me anything you want to know. Cheers.